What's up, everybody? Today is another episode of Ezekiel's Art Podcast, episode 20, and today I'm having Dennis Smith, and I'm inviting him right now. So, sweet, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, Dennis Smith, uh, D.L. Smith, I paint. <laughs> so, uh, what kind of uh, art do you, uh, do you do? Uh, I like doing a lot of abstract art. I did a lot of kind of tattoo ink art and stuff and drawing uh, when I was younger and stuff, but I like doing uh, a lot of abstract uh, paintings. What got you into abstract? Um, I just kind of like it more with the paint medium. Uh, I uh, I started uh, doing uh, the date night uh, paintings with my wife and then I uh, got more into like Van Gogh and stuff and I just kind of felt like, uh, like abstract kind of brings you into the feeling of things rather than uh, just a realistic picture. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of artists that I like that do abstract and everything. So when you're choosing a subject, um, is it kind of a concrete thing like that you're trying to represent or is it more of a feeling? Uh, usually it's more of a feeling and, uh, uh, um, kind of, uh, principle too. And, uh, a lot of times it, it also depends on, uh, what music I'm listening to, what I'm thinking about and everything that kind of changes it. What's your favorite type of music to listen to when you're in the studio? Um, I listen to a lot of uh, Michael Kiwanuka, uh, Dope Lemon, uh, and Leonard Cohen. Uh, what's your uh, favorite uh, Dope Lemon album? Because I, I, I like Dope Lemon as well. Uh, um, I got a couple of songs that I really like. One of my favorites is uh, Salt and Pepper. Yeah, that one's one of my favorites, too. So, yeah. so how do you feel like the music influences you while you're painting? Um, I think that it sometimes affects my color choice and uh, the structure of the painting a lot, mm-hmm. whether it's going to be more colorful or darker. and and also whether the uh, edges and movements are going to be smooth or whether it's going to have more of a drip style or erratic. So from when it's erratic, what is the, what, what kind of, what, what you got playing going uh, on in the background? Uh, uh, usually uh, some rock music or uh, some uh, other songs like uh, Nina Simone Sinnerman, mm-hmm. just kind of the beat and everything. But, yeah. <laughs> so when did you start? What made you think, I'm going to go abstract rather than stay with the realism stuff that when you started painting? Um, some of it, a uh, uh, lot of it was when I first started painting, I was just more drawn to the abstract painting, mm-hmm. uh, which I'm not so much with drawing and, and ink and everything, uh, because I, I just feel like paint is... Uh, 
an amazing medium to sink your hands into and get messy and, and everything and uh, to really, really convey emotion and, and feeling the feeling of a place that you want to take somebody to and the viewer to uh, uh, a lot of times I fill that more with abstract paintings rather than realistic paintings I can see an abstract painting that will give me the feeling of being at the uh, ocean whereas a picture of the ocean doesn't really give me that feeling it gives me more of the feeling of looking at a picture of the ocean that somebody else had recently frequented. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I just kind of uh, feel like there's certain paintings that can give you the... the uh, feeling of being there in the uh, ocean, salt and mist in the air and stuff. The uh, picture can. So what are your favorite subjects? Um, um, as far as what? what? Like when, when you're starting a painting, do you have in mind a specific um, like I'm feeling this type of way, and then you want to convey that, or is there? Are you trying to um, just kind of represent the moment, just let yourself kind of flow? Um, a lot of the uh, subject is usually family, and uh, and kind of just uh, space and time that you kind of just want to never end mm -hmm. uh, uh, comfort the comfort of, of uh, the people that you love and also your own like uh, moment of peace I definitely get that across from your paintings when I get to see them at Matt Collapse because oh did you take those did you take those down or are they still oh, there oh they're still there I was just okay yeah. okay <laughs> I was like no man I love that work but it, it it has a certain serenity like just getting to kind of like sit back and then just allow yourself to just go over the lines and kind of feel it rather than having to try to analyze oh yeah so that's a dog Eh, oh, they messed up there. And it's like, no, this, you can just experience the art and let it just speak to you. Yeah. It's such a, a calming experience. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have any angry paintings at all, but uh, one of the recent ones that I'm working on uh, called The Lovers uh, is a lot like my embrace one and so it's kind of the comfort of two people who hold each other through the storm and stuff and that's really comforting and um and i uh, just kind of your, your place of peace away from everything but it does also have a uh, kind of uh darker energy to it that is kind of uh, uh, don't mess with us kind of thing. Kind of the more uh, prickly side yeah. of, of uh, family out towards other people. And so like, uh, like that painting that you showed me yesterday, uh, who is that artist by? I, I, Completely forgot as soon as I got home because I wanted uh, to look up more of his stuff. What, what, which painting? The uh, the don't mess with us one. Oh, uh, oh yeah, that that was uh, John Laurie. John Laurie, yeah, 
Yeah. It's, it's yeah. A great, he, it's a great a, he also had a show that we watched that was really good and stuff. It was like a little two season series and stuff uh, called Painting with John Laurie. But yeah. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. So when you're um, choosing your paints, is it kind of an in the moment sporadic thing or are you analyzing what you want to put down? Um, it starts out sporadic and in the moment uh, and then becomes a lot more precise and everything because uh, a lot of times I figure if I use a wrong color or uh, do something that I don't like on it, uh, it is going to build up texture. And even when you can't see it anymore, really, it's still part of what makes it up. Uh, uh, that's also why I don't get mad about when I'm painting and stuff. But because I... I I always try to leave a little bit of the mistakes in there or the things that I don't like and make them an enjoyable accent to it. Uh, I can definitely see that in your work. It's very, um, I'm staring at the painting right now behind you and it's, it's just, um, it feels very human, you know. Uh, uh, I can't remember what the, uh, if I believe it's in Japan where they have the tradition of like breaking the pot and then sealing it with gold, so like, or the mistake being part of the beauty. I can't remember if that was Japan that had a certain philosophy and it, it really does kind of come through like with your art. It's very, it speaks to you from not trying to be like I've seen like with like the difference between like a renaissance painting and like and uh, like abstract it's not trying to be this you know representation of like Jesus Christ on the cross or something like that and it's got like some kind of like dogma behind it this is just like ex an ex experience of the human you know yeah I, I uh, a lot of times like to try to have a uh, little bit of flow and action that's kind of reminiscent of like dancing or or where you can kind of see the physical movements because I do use my hands a lot and everything and I do like to have what's left over from when I flick my hand or move my hand across the painting and stuff to, to kind of give it a little bit more energy. So what kind of techniques do you use besides uh, the ones you just mentioned? Um, I also use uh, knives, uh, uh, painting knives, um, syringe a lot. I actually have it right here. I was adding some stuff. It's just a little glue adhesive syringe, and I like using those a lot. I like how thick you can get the paint on in some places, and also the precision or uh, just the uh, flow and movement of it. And I'm not really, I've never really been trained in art. I just uh, I drew since, ever since I can remember. And, uh, but I, I use those. I'll use uh, uh, reciprocating saw blades. Uh, comb, uh, just about anything.
insane. But wow, that's that's awesome. It's it's awesome to see like that anyone can be an artist. It's just it's an intuitive part of us. And like you don't have to like go to school and be trained for it. You can teach yourself and make amazing stuff. And so, so I was wondering why did you start with door uh, with uh, or why do you do wood rather than or canvas ones recently? At least from what I've seen uh, from the ones you brought um, in. I uh, never, never uh, used uh, uh, like wood doors and stuff like that before because I didn't know how well the paint would stay on it after a while. But then I saw a bunch of other people doing it, and so I decided to do a couple of them and everything. Uh, I didn't know if uh, if the paint would be good on them and everything, but and I uh, thought from other people uh, that there's like a uh, kind of a stigma on using uh, used wood and stuff like that but but I do like reusing stuff too why would there be a uh, stigma behind uh, using uh, like doors and stuff like that um, I, I've ne never really been in the art world and everything, and so I guess it's kind of just a preconceived notion that I've had. That's why I've never really taken my art anywhere to show, because, uh, there's some places that, and, and also probably in movies and stuff, you see you know uh some artist type portrayed in movies that uh are more on the critique side that uh yeah so i i just uh didn't know if people would appreciate that and stuff but then again and I, I also hadn't been to a place like Mad Labs and stuff. So, I yeah, their gallery is really unique. Yeah, I never uh, really met uh, uh, a lot of uh, other artists in my life. Well, now uh, you get a chance to mingle with a lot of them there. Yeah, uh, or at least when 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 you can kind of get time to meet them because everybody just kind of seems to be dipping or coming coming in and leaving at the same time. But uh, have you seen the uh, the movie Pollock with uh, Ed Harris? It sounds familiar. I don't recall. What's uh, it about? It, it's uh, Jackson Pollock, and uh, there's a lady on there that's playing. Peggy Guggenheim, and uh, she's like one of the elite uh, art people and everything. Uh, I guess uh, that's kind of a uh, little bit of the thought that I had uh, surrounding bringing my art to any gallery that it would be like you know, uh, uh, really looked down on by someone mm -hmm. who's not educated in art, who hasn't been to college for it, everything like that. Uh, and so, in a lot of ways, I felt that I needed to have uh, the uh, gallery art canvas. Uh, if I was going to bring, bring it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But. I feel that, though. Uh, 
but there are some places that are pretty snooty. Um, I've been to a couple and it's like, oh yeah, no, they would not accept my art here. <laughs> uh, but so I totally understand where you're coming from. But I really like the idea of uh, recycling uh, stuff for art. Is there any other ways that you'd uh, like to kind of incorporate that into your art? Um, a little, little bit. I I don't really uh, have a whole lot of the stuff that I recycle for my art. I have a lot of stuff that I recycle for uh, furniture and my house and everything. I am always saving stuff and reusing stuff. I've just never really incorporated it into my paintings. That's cool though. So you still, uh, you, you're, uh, you, you can fix things and you can do art. So you got everything uh, kind of set. So now you can, uh, so do you make it creative or is it kind of just like minimalistic functional when you make the furniture from recycled stuff? Um, it, it is kind of minimalistic. A uh, lot of the stuff that I'd like to do a lot more funky furniture, but uh, for the most part, it's uh, mostly been using like uh, granite saved from a big job for uh, countertops and stuff like that. And, and also uh, ceramic tile that I've saved that was going to get thrown away. I've cut into pieces and, and redid our kitchen floor, did like a big mosaic in the middle of our kitchen floor. And That's cool. Stuff like that. And then I've also got a lot of stuff that hasn't been recycled yet that I've brought back that I want to do stuff with. And I've been running out of space in the garage for that. But I hadn't found the time. I've got uh, uh, some beams that are about three and a half feet uh, wide by six feet long and about 14 inches thick that I plan on doing something with. Oh, that'd be yeah. cool. The only so issue has been time. Yeah, uh, yeah. I wish you could have more of it. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering if you could kind of take us on a, a little tour of your studio or, or show some of your art. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I gotta switch this around somehow. There it is. Okay. Ooh. That's a piece that I was working on called The Lovers. I really, but, really like that one. Yeah. I, so it's it's not finished yet? Uh, not yeah, I'm okay. just adding little touches and everything. Like, I just did that there and adding some of the light red and stuff. And I probably want to add a little darker black in here and stuff. Or maybe a darker red. And yeah, just little touch-up things that I have to do, but it, it's almost there. Um, this one that I call Sophisticated Beasts. I, I love it. Like it. Still needs a little, little bit more color to make, make it pop. That is yeah. really cool. Um, this one, I don't have a name for it yet, but I'll have to move some stuff to get a full photo of it. Sorry. My easel was falling down while I was trying to move it. I oh, know. <clears throat> 
But I saved the painting off of it. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, this, this one is 56 inches by 96 inches. And I've got a bit of little stuff to do, like filling in some uh, little spots, adding a little bit more color because I wanted to be extremely colorful too. Mm -hmm. And I might add some uh, unbleached titanium to it. Oh, that would look nice. This one is called Music in the Flesh. The uh, oh, that's cool. My camera just finally focused on it. Pretty much done. Uh, there are even the ones that are done are always done until they're not, until I have another idea or something. <laughs> uh, not sure what else I've got in, in here. Oh, I have. Of um, this one that I did that kind of reminded me a little, little bit of uh, the song Girls on Film from, I think, 1981 and stuff. But, yeah, and I've got a lot more paintings, but... Oh, and then this one right here. Oh, I love that one. That one's one of my favorites. Yeah, this was my first favorite one <laughs> that I really liked. Yeah, and I oh, and then there's this one that one one's really cool it, i almost like, like see a figure in there is that intentional yeah uh, yeah okay. it's uh it's uh uh called the widower and paralysis that's but, cool yeah it, it kind of reminded me of a friend that I had who was a Marine, he passed away, but uh, he uh, was paralyzed half of his body from a uh, stroke and stuff. But yeah, so that's what I've got up here so far. I've got a bunch out in storage right now, now stored in our basement and everything and then i've also got some uh mad labs yeah some of my favorites are macro labs uh, now my phone holder is not working there we go there we go yeah so when you do your color choices, do you have like do you do it on like a certain set of colors that you like to work together, or how do you choose? Um, I have uh, some favorite colors that I like to use. Uh, there's uh, kind of like a late blue that I had been against using and I was uh, doing a collaboration painting with my wife and she was using it but I'd seen uh, some uh, paintings that just and uh, things that, that just way overused it so I was uh, afraid of using it because mm -hmm. I it, it was like I had a little bit of PSTD or whatever and everything about it. And uh, my wife got 
be better with using that uh, color because uh, yeah, I was I was nervous about it, but then uh, I started thinking about it and uh, the painting really needed it. And I find that a lot of my other paintings have needed it, but uh, mainly I uh, try to uh, start off with unbleached titanium and, and uh, blue gray and stuff like that. And then I start adding colors that pop. And sometimes I want, I choose colors that will complement each other. Other times, depending on the painting, I might want uh, them to kind of work against each other. Uh, it just kind of depends on what I'm feeling and and what I feel like, like the painting is wanting to be because I try not to fight with the painting. <laughs> yeah, if you fight with the painting, you'll lose. <laughs> yeah, you know, usually. <laughs> but. I, have, uh, I can't remember if I've asked this question yet, but who are your favorite abstract artist that really got you into this? Um, I like John Laurie a lot. I like uh, Jackson Pollock. And there's a guy named Luck Villard that I really like. Uh, and, um, I like a lot of graffiti art, too. Um, it, I'm not sure of anybody else that I really uh, kind of latched on to a lot. But th those are probably my favorites. And do you have any specific paintings that, that you really uh, that really struck you when you were uh, starting off? Um, Jackson Pollock's mural uh, really, really struck me. Uh, I like uh, really like uh, Picasso's bull. Uh, mm -hmm. One I can't remember what it's called, and uh, I uh, a lot of them that, that I like, I uh, wouldn't even try to attempt, uh, like Salvador Dali and stuff, uh, uh, and it's also kind of just not my style. Mm -hmm. And, and I also uh, think a lot about uh, buildings and houses in, like, Puerto Rico and places that use a lot of colors. And that kind of influences me a lot, too. I, I have an appreciation for uh, kind of rich and colorful cultures as well. I I love color, but for the longest time, I didn't even touch it because I was kind of scared because I tried painting like when I was a kid a couple times. And then I was just like, no, I can't get this. I'm just going to stick with pencils and drawing. And then eventually I was like, man, fuck, I'm going to have to, uh, if I want to do what I want to do, I'm going to have to actually start painting and learn about color. And it's been quite the journey. Yo, yeah, I had, uh, painted once when I was a kid. Uh, I had an uncle who uh, was into doing Bob Ross style paintings and had me paint something. And it was a mountain and lake, and I just didn't like it. Yeah, I, I did one of those too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but. So. I think it's time for my favorite question that I like to ask artists that really just kind of flips it on them and gives them a minute to think. What is art? Um, art to me is, um, I think, your uh, place of peace and capturing uh, 
moment in time that you can't really take a picture of. Um, it, it could be a feeling of a weight lifted off your chest when uh, you're finished going through something really difficult or it, it could be like that blue period when things are really dark and hard but it could also be that blue period where things are really dark and hard but you have somebody that is a comfort to you or someone that uh makes you happy even if you're sad and uh kind of gives you that uh reprieve from the storm uh, and yeah it's it, it's just kind of uh the moments in time i think that you never want to lose you always want that reminder of what's out there that that keeps you going wow that's fucking beautiful <laughs> uh, that's, that's the best that's the best one i've heard so far i think um but it really does has come across in your art and i can see that that's that that's how you you are and and so uh before we wrap it up uh where can people find your art uh uh painfully yours on instagram uh, uh we don't really have a store up or anything yet okay so if people are interested in your pieces uh they should DM you on there, or are you not selling right now? Uh, we're not selling right now. We might okay. in the future, but okay. Yeah, right now I just want to keep painting, and, and I do like showing it and stuff. But yeah, and it's also uh, nice for me because I have hand tremors and stuff since i was a kid and uh, i really like being able to uh, do the uh movement and and everything with the abstract art too uh, kind of it, it's a lot better than for me than trying to uh draw on stipe shade to get things out that's, that's fucking awesome, dude. That's beautiful because it's great to show that no matter what, you can overcome it and make art and make something beautiful. Even if, you know, your hands are shaking, you can still make beautiful movements of art and paint beautiful uh, things full of emotion that really, I don't know how to put it into words, honestly, because a lot of your stuff is kind of, for me at least, it's a little bit beyond words. It's something that I kind of just like have, have to experience. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I, I like it to be an experience. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go for it. What is art to you? I see it as because I think about it a lot because I I'm trying to figure what the hell I'm even doing. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm making this stuff, but what, what is it? Um, to me, it's communication. It's a form of communication. Yeah. Because uh, uh, I see it as like, like language. We use language to communicate things, but it takes the place where language fails and it has its limit because you can only describe something so much but it'll never, never be like a visual representation or like a symbolic representation yeah so i have a whole really long theory of it that i'm working on slowly <laughs> but yeah. um but 
would say that's kind of the premise of what I believe. Or, yeah. 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 Communicating the things that you can't write down or take a picture of. Exactly. Yeah. It's something beyond. And that's why I like abstract art, because it can go, go beyond the concrete, and you can still get the concept in your head. It's like um, instead of writing a whole long speech, you could just have a few succinct sentences and still get the idea across to someone. Yeah. Yeah, and it uh, doesn't matter what language or uh, and any of that. You, yeah, art's universal. All those uh, also can speak to uh, people through their experience in life, which might be different than yours, and they might see it differently, but it could also be something that strikes something with somebody who sees it completely different. Yeah, that's, that's a, the beautiful part about uh, abstract art is it's super subjectively interpretable. It doesn't have to be whatever, you know, you know like, I, you know, it's it's this thing. It's obviously, it's got to be this, well, I'm looking at an elephant right now on the wall. It's obviously got to be an elephant, and then everybody has to believe that. No, it, it can speak to you as it, as it is, kind of like, it also shows a reflection of your inner state, kind of like, like a Rorschach test. That yeah. can't speak today. Rorschach test. You learn about yourself by looking at something else and interpreting it. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you having me on here. I'm glad that we were able to do it. Thank you for doing it on such uh, short notice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah also, I guess, thank yeah. you for that art piece. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. I'm, I'm hanging it in the other room. I'm gonna strike a whole like uh, gallery thing of all my friends' art. I can't wait to, uh, to get it set up. Awesome. Yep. Sounds cool. Well, I'll catch you later, my dude. Thanks. Take it easy. You too. See you at Mad Collabs at some point soon. Yep.